the lady I'm talking to, to today that has, you know, an interesting journey in the music business and has done this for a while too. And uh, I believe that for an artist that is getting started, even the people that are already in the business, I believe you they will benefit more from this conversation. And um, because things keep changing as as uh, as the years go by. So what we are doing last year and the pandemic thing, the dynamics in promotion of music and even uh, building up uh, buzz around an artist and uh, music has keeps changing because of the advancement in technology things that come up like tiktok and and uh, social media and how people use that in order to tell a story from an artist's perspective introducing that to the world but hey we have uh, jacqueline jacks on the show she's from fva air radio and uh, welcome to the show how how is everything going for you in the new year 2022 Thank you for having me here. It's so nice to finally be here with you. It's exciting because we've been talking back and forth so long without actually having a, a video conversation. Yeah. So thanks for bringing me on. It's nice to be here. 2022 is starting off just as busy as it was ending. Oh my goodness. When 2021 ended, you know, I thought December was going to be a nice calm December and it Absolutely wasn't. I got no time off at all. <laughs> I worked right through Christmas. I think I had a day or an afternoon, a couple of naps here and there, and and that was about it. And I think this is this is where we're at today in the music business. It seems like there's more than enough business to be done, and there's so many projects and so many things going on, especially online because of the pandemic, and. Uh, it certainly has changed the landscape. You know, I've been around for 25 years in this business and working in radio or advertising and uh, working with artists and development. And I can say this is probably the easiest time for indie artists to get into the game because there are so many things happening and so many things you can do yourself. Yeah. And, and the interesting part is this, though, much as you are now on, on the side of helping artists, you know, put their music out, you've all, you, how did your journey start in the music? Because we have to get from that side. How did it, how did that get started for you? Started for you? Well, I started in artist development years ago um, in Miami, working for the American Vocal Academy. And primarily what I did is I used to go into the recording studios and I would, find a way to get the very best out of the artists and relate them to the engineer. And I would try and work back and forth for different labels where you get an artist in there and basically they, they haven't really been able to articulate their vision. And they freeze up in the studio. And what happens is you, you spend a lot of time trying to get the best out of them, right? They haven't had a lot of training. They probably are very nervous. Usually when they go in, the, the producer doesn't know how to communicate what he's looking for, right? So I was kind of like that liaison in between. And I used to be able to get very, very good voices out of people, like stretch their range and just get them really doing things that they didn't think that they could do before so that they could sing this music live once they got it recorded. And that at that time was a big deal. We didn't have YouTube. We didn't have a lot of fancy things, you know? So getting someone really up to speed quickly was what I primarily did for different record labels. And then after that, I got an opportunity to um, work in radio. And honestly, you know, I had a manager at the time he said, well, you want to go on internet radio or you want to go on FM radio? You know, we can put you on radio in Miami. And I'm like, okay, great. So how many people are we uh, going to reach? And he says, well, we'll reach about like 100,000 people. And I said, yeah, but we're reaching like over 250,000 people online. So can we do both? And he goes, if you're reaching 250,000 people online, we're not going to put you here. <laughs> you got to keep doing that. He goes, and I honestly, I know nothing about it. It was so uncharted territory that I just stayed where I was. And I said, you know, I'm going to go ahead and take my chances here. It, it's just, I feel like it's more progressive, you know? So uh, I stayed in it. And then before I knew it, I was doing, uh, public relations, advertising, you know, you just, you can't help it. There's just so much to do. And if you have a knowledge of social media, which I did, as we got 
started and as apps came up, I would use them to um, get more advertising exposure for those shows. And it just, it kept rolling from there. Now I have a newsletter called Jack's Daily News and it kind of translates a lot of things, you know, like Facebook sends me updates and, and nice, uh, nice press releases on what's going on. Because when I tend to write articles, if I get it wrong, then they definitely want me <laughs> to alter it. I get little letters from them like, hey, can you can you just alter this? Because the search engine listings just categorize me really, really well. And um, ultimately, I've been able to, to use that even to gain exposure for indie artists. So I've stayed in it. I have the I have the opinion that listen, if you are having fun every single day in your job and you've managed to do that, then you don't need to stop. You can keep doing that. But the minute you don't enjoy it, then you go do something else. But I'm still happy. I'm still very very happy where I am. And it's interesting that you've done that 25 25 for 25 years now and you still yeah. uh, because a lot of people that come from where it started before we had streaming uh, services and YouTube, social media, mm -hmm. and all that taking over. It's hard for a lot of people to adapt into the new uh, way of uh, yeah. promoting music mm -hmm. and uh, introducing music to the world. So what, yeah. where, where does that come from for you in, in, in the ease to easily adapt with whatever technology that comes up, whenever, whatever advancement that comes up? You know, I have to thank my mom for that because she was the one that always pressed on me uh, to take computer lessons. So I actually learned how to build websites when uh, they were still just figuring it out. I mean, WordPress wasn't even there yet. <laughs> so I was in college, you know, just building websites for myself and, and for just projects that I wanted to, to do. And I was mystified by it. I was like, wow, I can make a web page look so cool and I can put anything on it and then I can get it out there and people can like, you know, sign on to it. I thought it was so cool. So I, I kind of was always really obsessed with, um, web design and like shaping out your own corner of the universe, which for the entertainment business is a wonderful thing because, you know, um, every artist needs to have some real estate <laughs> yep. and buying, you know, and when you start looking at it and you say, oh, this makes sense. You know, I, I understand what's happening here. The internet is filling up with online real estate. People are buying their names. You're getting some domains. It's really becoming more and more easier to have a website, but at the time you still had to pay a lot of money to get a website designed and built. You couldn't really do it yourself. You know, you had the manuals and things and it was like, oh, it took a long time to be able to do it. But now I've seen the technology just go to Squarespace and WordPress and blogs. Like you can even just, you know, build something out on YouTube if you wanted to and, and you know, and have a blog and you're good. So it's changed so much, but I have, really loved it every step of the way yeah and uh i know we're going to get into you know the streaming services and music and all that but uh there's yeah. also this part the life of people that do a lot of work behind the scenes in the music business right because mm -hmm. a lot of people get to see what is before them which is the artist and and they think that it's the it's fun yes working in but they never see uh, because they'll see the artist for two hours, but they don't know you behind the scenes has put in eight to 10 hours to make sure that happens. And even yeah. the quality of what the show will be like, uh, like how you are working with uh, in artist development, helping them sound better and, and all that work that you put yeah. in. So for you as the person behind the scenes uh, that people never get to see because they see the, the artist at the front, uh, mm -hmm. what makes you happy? Or what gives you joy in the in in doing that in doing the the, the job that you do? Well, right now I produce a uh, a show that not only um, kind of translates the latest in music industry news, but it also plays new music. And as a result, I have a team of PR individuals that work at uh, promoting that show, and so we're really good at music marketing. So we end up taking music marketing clients. And what happens is I will use like everything I know to get, you know, like if we have a million um, impressions on Twitter, then I can get that for an indie artist because it's, it's, it's pretty much the same premise, you know, whether you're, you're marketing a podcast or you're marketing an individual like me as a, a radio show host, or 
um, you're taking an artist that has absolutely no footprint and you're creating a digital footprint for them. And you're also starting to introduce them to different social media pages. I don't necessarily lock into anyone in particular because social changes so much as we've just seen, you know, like TikTok is almost ruling the world, right? And Instagram's right there trying to get it too. So like, <laughs> and YouTube is still a really big place where people discover music. So, you know, there's so many that, I always tell people, listen, start with what you know, start with where you are. And if, if you can't figure out social media, then you got to go just back to the basics and just, you know, get just get really honest with it. Like to do Instagram, build out nine really nice, you know, fo photos or something or reels and videos and express yourself there and then just go out there and talk to people on social media instead of being, you know, like building out your profile all the time. So there's a lot of things you can do as an indie artist and I love doing it. And the reason why I, I uh, stay, like I said, is just because it's, it gives me joy to see other people doing well. And I love the people like yourself that I get to meet just by doing this job. You know, I'm a very big introvert in one way, but a people person in another way. And I get to mix my creative energy with some really great people who also have that really amazing creative energy. And that is something that I find really feeding my soul. You know, like I feel like I love having friends that are just as creative, that are there just like excited to get up every single day and, and do what they do. And that's, you know, this is a great place to meet those. <laughs> so <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm staying here. <laughs> yeah, absolutely.